Welcome to 30 Days of Photoshop. Today, we're gonna to show you how to do frequency separation retouching. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And welcome to 30 Days of Photoshop. We're in the middle of a retouching series within 30 days. Yesterday, we did blemish removal on a portrait, and today we're taking the same exact image and showing you how to do frequency separation retouching. This is one of my favorite all-time techniques, and we have an included action that you can download. Just follow the link right down below. So we're picking up where we left off yesterday. We've already done our blemish removal. As you can see, it looks fantastic. Now it's time to do frequency separation. So just go to Window and down to Actions, then click on your little menu item over here, go to load actions, and then go to your Flurn frequency separation action that's included in your download for this tutorial. Go ahead and click on open, and you're gonna see it's gonna load right here on the very bottom. Now you've got an eight bit and a 16 bit action. Just make sure you go to image mode and check what mode you're in. JPEGs are gonna be eight bit, raw are gonna be 16 bit. So we're in eight bit, we just wanna choose the eight bit image. There we go, let's go ahead and hit play here and it's gonna guide you through a series of steps. I'll just kind of talk you through them. Basically, the first thing you wanna do is blur so you can't see skin texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and start blurring and if you're following along, fantastic. You wanna blur about 30 pixels, okay? So I don't wanna be able to see any texture at this point. All right, let's go ahead and hit okay. And then basically it does all kinds of magic. Uh, <laughs> And we hit continue and we're ready to use this tool. So frequency separation, what it does is it basically separates the texture from the color of your image. So let's open this up and show you how it works. Here in our group, we're just gonna pop this open and we have our high frequency or HF layer right here. This is the texture of our image. Now check this out. If I move this around, I'm actually moving around the texture of my photograph. How crazy is that? but behind it, you can see the color, okay? So moving around, this is just the texture. I know it looks super weird. Uh, clicking on the layer underneath it, this is me moving around the color. So if I turn off the texture layer, it just looks like a blurred photo, but with the texture layer back on, all of a sudden we have all this detail back. So why is this helpful? Well, the reason is because we can edit just the texture and just the color separately. So for instance, if we have an area of the skin where the color isn't exactly right, but the texture is okay, then we can edit just the color. Or maybe an area where the color is good, but the texture isn't what we want, then we can edit just the texture. So let's go ahead and show you how to do it. Now, for this, we're gonna go start by zooming out. There we go, fantastic. And I'm gonna create a layer in between them because we're gonna start working on our color. Now with this layer in between my high frequency and low frequency, we're gonna use our brush tool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sample, this is just an example here, by the way, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not pretending that this is gonna look great, but I'm gonna sample the color in our subject sweater. And you can see, I can paint on this layer and we can still see all of the texture of my image right above it, okay? Because this layer that's right above the area I'm painting has the texture. So that's kind of the idea, is we wanna sample colors from our original image by holding Alt or Option with the brush tool and then paint them in at a very low flow to help smooth transitions between light and dark. Okay, now normally I would use a pressure sensitive tablet, but I'm gonna use a mouse because I have a feeling you might be using one too. So let's hit B for the brush tool. The next thing you wanna do is make sure your flow is super low. We're talking like 3% to 5%. So let's hit Shift 05. That's gonna bring the flow of our brush to 5%. So what that means is I have to go over an area a bunch of times in order to really get it to show up, which we want that because we want this to be a very subtle, uh, like feathering from one color to another. What we don't want is a high flow because if you have a high flow and a high opacity, you're gonna try to like sample a color and then sample a color and then sample and paint. You see this? Oh, it's not looking natural at all, okay? By using a low flow, everything is gonna come together so hit, hold down shift and hit 05 on your keyboard or just type in 5% where it says flow. And then we just wanna sample and paint. So just make sure, go ahead and click. You can use any brush you want. Uh, just bring your hardness all the way down to zero. Okay, there we go. 
Now, let's hold Alt or Option and sample an area, okay? And then we're gonna just paint right over top of that area. There we go. So just sample and paint right where you're, right where you're sampling. Now the idea here is, and when you paint, just kind of like go in a little circle and you want to use a brush that's about the size of the area that you need to paint. Okay, so if you, if you need to cover a larger area, just use a slightly larger brush. For a smaller area, choose a smaller brush. So what I'm doing here is just really, really delicately sampling some colors and then painting right around there. There we go. So we have some highlight there. We'll just sample the highlight and paint right in there. And for this technique, you really don't want to be very far zoomed into your photograph. It actually helps to be a little bit further zoomed out because you see the image as a whole. If you're too far zoomed in, it can be really easy to like not blend everything together. It's almost like you are focusing on the small details, but with this stage, you really want to be focusing on larger details. We're looking at how light and color blend with one another. There we go. And this is really much, much better zoomed out. Okay, now if it looks like I'm not doing much, that means it's actually working and we're doing it right because it should go very slowly. Well, not like very slowly, but it this is not something where you just like click it on and off. But let's go ahead and see what I've done so far. Let's just turn this layer off and back on. There we go. And you can see how the skin looks much smoother as, than it did before. Now, if you do any areas where you're like, yeah, I didn't do that exactly right, like right down here, not a big deal. Just grab your eraser tool and just erase it away and then try it again. So there we go. There's a before and the after. And you can see how the skin's just starting to look smoother and smoother as I do this. Okay. So again, I want to use a smaller brush. Fantastic. When I'm working on smaller areas and a larger brush for large areas. There we go. And again, if you make a mistake, just grab your eraser tool or hit undo. No big deal. Fantastic. So I'm just kind of working my way around this image. Again, not zoomed in. We want to make sure we can affect. There we go. Affect these areas and get them to just really nicely blend in together. All right, now this subject has great skin, so there's not like a crazy ton amount that I have to do here, uh, but you can even use the same technique on a person's arms and legs and hands and things like that, just to kind of smooth out the light and dark. All right, fantastic. So here we are just smoothing these areas out as well. And everything has full texture because my texture is actually on the high frequency layer. So let's just turn this off and on and see how nicely we've been able to smooth everything out. Fantastic. But if I zoom back in, check it out. I still have my full texture. I am in no way altering my texture at all here. This is just the color. All right. Fantastic. It's looking really nice. All right. Now, if you do have a pressure sensitive tablet, like a Wacom tablet, I would highly recommend using one of those for this process because I think it just makes it much more natural and easy. But I'm using a mouse right now so I can be, um, so I can be uh, maybe the same as you if you're using a mouse too. Fantastic. Wow, it's looking really, really good. Okay, so again, just focusing on the transitions between light and dark and doing my best to even those transitions out. Okay, well, this looks great. Now, up until now, we focused on basically just the color of the image. But what happens when you wanna work on the texture of the image? Well, all that's on the high frequency layer. So let's go ahead and zoom in to our high frequency layer. There we go, this is just texture. Now we took care of the majority of the texture with our blemish removal, 
but we can still do things with our texture layer, like remove flyaway hairs and things like that. So for this, what we want to use is our clone stamp tool. Let's hit S for the clone stamp tool, and then up at the top here, make sure it says sample current layer. If it says sample current and below, it's gonna look like this, it's gonna look horrible. So if if it's like, if you ever get something like that, it's like, why? Just make sure you're set to sample the current layer. Okay, now here, I'm just gonna sample the area texture that I want. And for instance, I can just paint right away this, right over top of this flyaway hair, and it's gone. Okay, incredibly quickly, incredibly easily. Same thing right down here, if I want that bit of hair gone, because what we're doing is only affecting texture on this layer. So my layer underneath had color and this layer has texture. Fantastic. So it's kind of like an advanced healing brush in which I can just paint whatever texture that I want and I don't have to worry about the color not being right because my color, again, is on another layer. So the only thing that I'm paying attention to at this point is my texture. Fantastic. And we don't have a ton to do here because we did a lot of it in our last episode with our blemish removal. There we go. But if there are any additional texture issues that you see, you can take care of them using this step. Now, some people won't even do blemish removal. Some people will just move right into frequency separation. And if that seems like something you want to do, then that's totally cool too. Fantastic. This is so nice. It really just does a great job replacing texture while keeping the exact color that you want. All right. Good deal. Okay. Well, I think we're looking pretty dang good at this point. I'm super happy with how this image has turned out. Again, personally, I'm, I like uh, retouched images to look relatively natural. So I'm not trying to make this look like, you know, like perfect to the, to the point where it looks fake. You know, that's, that's not my style of retouching. Everyone has their own style, but I like people to actually look uh, like themselves. All right, let's go ahead and turn this entire frequency separation group off and on. So the great thing about this frequency separation retouching is that it's gonna be very apparent when you're zoomed in and when you're zoomed out. And that's why it's an important step in the process because it affects the color of the skin as a whole. So here we are zoomed out. Let's turn this off and back on. And you can see how everything just kind of smooths out a little bit. Now, if there's an area that you're not wild about, like I think I overdid it on the eyebrow right here, no big deal. Just grab your eraser tool and just erase it back out a little bit. There we go. So we can see like color and lighting consistencies. Let's go ahead and take a look at our subject's forehead here how we have like light and then dark and then light and then dark again. And afterwards, you can see it's much smoother. The transition between light and dark has smoothed out and we don't have as much color inconsistencies, okay? And that's the type of thing that we should be looking for. So you can see a big change here when we're zoomed out and also when we zoom back in, we'll be able to see a ton of changes and help with our texture as well. Alrighty, well, let's go ahead and turn both of these layers off and back on again, and we can see these changes. I like this style of retouching because our subject looks great, but she looks very much like herself, and all the detail in her skin has been retained. Well, there we have our frequency separation retouching. Now, this is just a bite-sized portion of what you can do with frequency separation, which is incredibly powerful. If you want to learn more, just click up here. We have a pro tutorial on it that's absolutely amazing, chock full of tons of examples. Well, don't forget to join the 30 days of Photoshop. You can do so by clicking on the link right down below. We're almost done. Oh, I hope you're having a great time. I know that I am. Thanks again. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye everyone.